So I'm joined now by the CEO of Lucid Talk Polling, uh, Bill White, the, the Managing Director. Bill, what is your assessment, first of all, on, well, first of all, what, what was your predictions before we talk about the assessment of the uh, Assembly elections 2022? What was your predictions? Well, yeah, of course, as pollsters, what we do is we uh, model data that we receive through our opinion polling and we forecast uh, party vote shares. We don't actually get into the uh, the interesting game, if you like, of predicting where the seats will fall. So we're, we're very pleased the way our forecast worked out. We had Sinn Féin forecast around 27%. They actually exceeded that a bit. They had 29%. With the DUP in 21%, they got 21.5%. Uh, we hear an announcement in the background there. We, um, the, also, unions party we overestimated a little bit, uh, but a couple of percent, which seems to have gone, you know, to bolster up the DUP a little bit, and maybe gone a little bit to the TUV. We got the TUV pretty spot on. We predicted them at nine. They've come in just close to eight percent. So we're very pleased overall. It shows our models are pretty good, and uh, the election has turned out in terms of party vote shares very much along what we expected. Do, do you think, from uh, you know, perhaps talking to people, that the campaign itself was a little flat? Did you get that impression? Well, yes, people have said that, and certainly I got that impression. I think that was very much driven from the strategy, particularly the Sinn Féin ran. Sinn Féin decided on a safe campaign, not frighten the horses, to use that term. Uh, they didn't talk too much about a border poll, which probably would have galvanised more support on the DUP side and would have sparked off a debate and would have made the campaign you know, a little bit more feisty, as it were. So I think that was driven a lot by that. They played it safe. They knew they were ahead in the polls. They were a good 6 to 7% ahead of the DUP, who had dropped 5 or 6% in the polls uh, since the 2017 Assembly election. And that's been borne out by the election. They've only hit around 21, 21.5%. Um, so they, they played it safe, uh, and uh, the, the old Napoleon line comes to mind. Maybe they said, you know, don't interrupt your enemy when they're making mistakes. Uh, so maybe the Sinn Féin followed that line. I think that led through to, you know, when you don't get one side playing it safe, then you don't get the spark in the, in the campaign. So mm -hmm. it was fairly benign and fairly... Uh, non-controversial. But, but certainly when it came to the election there were some extraordinary results. Um, in, in, in well indeed, absolutely. Yeah. I mean when you get that change, it's still a seismic change. I mean, still, yeah. you know, for a major party like the DUP to drop six or seven percent in the vote share, it's pretty sizable and you're going to lose some seats in that. They have actually overperformed in terms of seats against their vote share. They've done quite well with that much lower vote share, but of course a gap like that with Sinn Féin, you're not going to match them a number of seats, so it yeah. looks as if they're going to fall two or three seats short of uh, the Sinn Féin uh, number of seats uh, gained, so or number of seats achieved. Um, the, the Alliance have done very well. We had them on 14% vote share. They've got 14%, 13.5% actually. And Alliance have overperformed against that as well in terms of the number of seats. They've been very good at their vote management. And there has been a number of, uh, as you well know, shocks. I mean, uh, in terms of surprises, Nicola Mallon, the, uh, the looks as if she may, uh, she, you know, she may lose the, uh, her seat in North Belfast. Of course, that's all with the you know, comes along with the drop and the disappointing performance uh, for the SDLP, disappointing for them, uh, because they underperformed. We had them in 10%, it looks as if they're coming in around 9% vote share, so they've underperformed slightly in terms of the polling. Yeah. Uh, but we had, you know, the polls had them predicted in decline. They weren't resonating with the with, uh, nationalist Republican voters in terms of their strategies. Uh, very much like also Unionist Party are not resonating, they're a little bit confused. And these two parties sort of mirror images of each other in the two communities in Northern Ireland need to have a long think of what their strategy is going to be in the future because uh, they certainly are, you know, they're presenting mixed messages to the electorate. And I think they really need to get a cohesive message and do, do a lot of thinking before they go into the next election. And, and is, so that's the two sort of parties, but Alliance certainly is the opposite of that. They, they have extraordinary results. Two candidates in South Belfast, you Indeed. think, see Steve McBride, remember 1998 he lost the seat and mm. they were the sixth largest party in the Assembly at that time and mm. now they look to be the third. They look to be the third. I yeah. mean that growth mm. has been ongoing, I mean it's been going over the last five or ten years. There has been a big growth in the middle ground and the good, good thing about Alliance, it used to come from disaffected unionist voters, a lot of their focus in unionist areas. They're now getting that very balanced. They are congen they can genuinely say they're a cross-community party and not just a home for very liberal type unionists. Um, they're gaining votes in seats uh, west of the band, they're gaining substantial vote 
numbers and seats west of the ban. They're gaining seats in West Ban. Of course, the first win an upper ban in this uh, election. Mm -hmm. So yes, they're doing extremely well. They have overperformed against their vote share. We had them on 14% vote share. They've come in 13 and a half. But you get that in the PR election. They've done very uh, well with their seats. The opposite of that, and I have to be fair to them, is the surge in the TUV vote. They got up to nearly 8%, but of course they only have Jim Allister still as their representative. They have been, you could say, unlucky in terms of just where the votes have fallen. They're not transfer friendly, which is one of their major weaknesses. Um, they, not even within the unionist family, certain sections of the unionist family, are they, are they vote transfer friendly. And that is a big problem. And of course, the classic example of that was most people have thought they'd had a seat in Strangford, but uh, at the end of the day, just it was the, the number of transfers that went to the TUV in Strangford to enable them to get a seat was just very, just so low that they just sat there in the count stages and uh, eventually finished up in sixth place. Yeah. Well, Bill, that's a good way to end. Uh, thank you very much indeed for summarising that for us. Thank you very much. No problem. Thanks.